I just want to remind everybody, uh, Wednesday night, we're still going to have a Bible study at 6 o'clock. Scott's going to be teaching us this Wednesday night. We're still in the Book of Romans, so uh, he's filling in for me this week. Uh, so come out and uh, hear him teach. I uh, wish I could be here for it myself, because I always going to do a good job. Also, want to remind now that school's out. Uh, remind everybody we play pickleball at 10 o'clock on Tuesdays and Thursdays. And everybody's welcome to come out and watch or play. Um, you know, teachers, I know if, once you get off school here uh, in a week or so yourselves, Come out and play with us. It's a lot of fun. That's 10 o'clock Tuesdays and Thursdays. And also wanted to remind everybody again, please be here. Well, be here every week, number one. But uh, June 4th, uh, my dad's coming. He's going to be giving us the morning message. That's why it says Big Mike in the bulletin. Um, brother Dad, as I like to call him sometimes, will be here. And I sure would appreciate it if you'd be here too to hear him. And it makes me feel good to have a better, a big crowd the day that he's here. Um, because, you know, that's my dad. Anyways, uh, as for today, I had kind of planned on a sermon at one point called Learn Today. But knowing what the significance was of this weekend to so many, I changed the name of it to Graduate Today. So today we're going to look at what it means really as we in our Christian lives uh, kind of continue to graduate or to, you know, learn more and more uh, about our faith, about what it means to be a Christian. Now, as I say that, I'm going to say, I remember these high schoolers when they started high school. Been here long enough now, so that I remember uh, when Sam became a freshman and, and Bella and uh, uh, all the others. I, and now here they are graduating high school. It just blows my mind, amen? Mm -hmm. We're all kind of like, huh, what? I remember how important that day was to me, too, albeit many years ago now. I remember how important it was to me, how proud my dad was of me when I finally graduated college. A big event in your life, but really just the next step, to say the least. Uh, I'm going to quote someone right now. This is something that was said to a graduate just a couple days ago. Uh, is to take advantage of what you've learned and learn all you can from here on out. Keep the Lord in your plans because nothing works in life without God. Amen. That's Bobby Broyles, by the way. And I don't know if he knew this or not. He's probably like, how did Mikey know what I said? Well, your granddaughter posted it on Facebook. And I listened to that, that he was saying to Austin, his great-grandson that was graduating high school, and I thought, wow, that's really good advice, Bobby. Absolutely right. Take advantage of what you've learned and learn all you can here on out. Keep the Lord in your plans because nothing works in life without God. Now think about that for a second, y'all. Like, spot on. Like, I could have had you come up and just say that, and we could have just all left today, but I didn't, so stay put. See, the fact is, though, even though that's really good advice to graduates, it's also good advice to each and every one of us. All Christians must learn and grow and advance. We have a responsibility, I believe, to continue to know more about Jesus, to build our relationship with the Lord. Philippians chapter 4, verse 9 says, Keep putting into practice all you learned and received from me. Everything you heard from me and saw me doing, then the God of peace will be with you. Keep putting into practice all you've learned. Now, folks, there's a lot to that verse, sure. But as Christians, we know that when we learn to obey Jesus, we've got to continue to put that into practice every single day of our lives. No matter what happens in our lives, if we put God first, we can succeed. So high schoolers yesterday, again, big day. You got, if you didn't get it, you'll get it soon. A little certificate. Your high school diploma. Now, how many still that have graduated, let's say, over 10 years ago, how many still have their high school diploma? Know where it's at. Now, take a look around, high schoolers. That's a lot of hands. This is important to a whole bunch of us. That's a big accomplishment. And I'm proud of each and every one of you for make it this far, but you've still got a lot of work to do. To get this diploma in our Christian lives, though, let's look at Titus chapter 3, verse 14. It says, our people must learn to devote themselves to doing what is good 
in order to provide for the urgent needs and not live unproductive lives or unfruitful lives, some versions say. So here's what I would say to a graduate, and I'll say it to you right now, graduates. Work ethic. That is a very important thing. Hard work will get you everywhere. If you work hard at what you do, you can succeed. You will succeed. But most importantly, if you work hard at maintaining your faith, at growing your faith, at learning, at growing, and advancing in your relationship with Jesus Christ, guys, there's nothing that can stop you. See, when we really get this diploma of our Christian lives, that's when we, as we're looking at this verse, we've got to realize what this means to us. See, at some point in our lives as Christians, as people, we should have gone from a place where we really were looking just at ourselves and our own needs and what we want to serve, <coughs> to reaching others, to helping others to understand what it is to have a relationship with Jesus. We're going to go from self to service. Now, in order to do that, we've got to think about the things you've learned. Let me tell you, uh, me and Ryan have been teaching this uh, third and fourth grade Sunday school class, and I'm not one to brag or anything, but uh, our entire Sunday school class was on the honor roll at Wayland this year. I'm really proud of those kids for that. All of them that come on, on a regular basis that are there every week, they're all on the honor roll. Amen. I told them today, work ethic, hard work can get you everywhere. Now, what are we learning in church? What are we learning from our Christian examples, our church family? What are we saying each and every Sunday and every time we meet? We talk about the fruits of the Spirit a lot, don't we? Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. I love when the kids are here on Wednesday night and uh, the first, Sunday, the first Wednesday of the month they come out and they'll sing some songs for us right at the end of our Bible study. And they love that song. They talk about the cherry and the watermelon, sure. But it's the love, the joy, the peace, the patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. That's what we're teaching them, right? And that's what we want them to take with them uh, as they grow and as they advance and as they learn in their lives. As they go from thinking about themselves and into service. Part of our service as Christians is to apply those fruits of the Spirit every day, everywhere we go. That's hard sometimes, sure. But it's something that we must strive for. Something that we should always be seeking to do. See, as we seek God first, should we also not be seeking the behavior that Jesus has asked us to have? To be joyful people. To be people that are kind. To be people that are generous. So when we look to Jesus, we have to understand a few things. Again, something we talked about this morning in our Sunday school class. Our Lord came in to Jerusalem for the final time. Great leader. Teacher. Miracle worker. On a donkey. Don't. If you think about any of our world leaders right now doing something like that, if you think about the president, whoever it may be this year or that, coming into a town in uh, Fort Focus, I look, nothing against the Fort Focus. I used that because I had one just not too long ago. It's a good car. But can you see the president driving into town on one? No, of course not. Of course not. Nor would our country expect that from him. But yet, Jesus Christ, God on earth, God the Son, comes in on a donkey, humbly coming in. See, Jesus taught us to serve. He taught us that humility. Let's never forget that Jesus washed feet. I don't even really want to talk about this one too much because this just, uh, it bothers me to know that our Lord had to get on the ground and wash these guys' stinky feet. And really, I don't want to talk about feet too much because I don't really like them a whole lot. But think about this. Because remember what Peter said? I can wash my feet. Uh-uh. And Jesus said, yes, I am. John chapter 13, verses 14 through 15. Jesus said, since I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you ought to wash each other's feet. I have given you an example to follow. Do as I have done to you. That's service, for sure. There's nothing self about that. And this is what the Lord is telling us to do, y'all. Wash each other's feet. No, I don't think he literally wants me to go down here and wash Eddie's feet. I really hope not. I really hope not. But he wants us to serve each other. And that's what we must do. And not only that, he said he gave us the example. Yes, he most certainly did. See, all the things that we are learning about on Wednesday night uh, with Romans, all the things on Sunday night that we've been talking about through Acts, 
None of it matters anything without Jesus Christ. It makes zero sense without the gospel message of Jesus Christ, his sacrifice, and his resurrection. So folks, we have an example to set. And graduates, so do you. You are now, and you've had this responsibility to set this example as Christians. Talking about an example. I know someone that really, if they gave up degrees for example setting, this person would definitely have one. Uh, you probably know where you can put the next picture up there, Ryan. Um, oh yeah, Miss Shirley. Miss Shirley, what a great example she is and has been for so many years to so many of us. It was so great to see her last Sunday night at the Mother's Day banquet. Let me tell you, I really got a thrill. And so did Scott with uh, this uh, past Thursday when she showed up at our Little League Baseball game. Amen. And she got wheeled in and she said, you didn't think I'd come, did you? And I said, no, I didn't. And she sat there and she cheered us on. And it, it just warmed my heart. And I knew right then and there we were winning that game. There was no doubt about it with Miss Shirley there. What an example, though, that she has set. And there's so many others that we could say this about. Thank you for the example that you've set for me and for our graduates and for our children. And now others, we have that responsibility as well. To continue that, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 29. Talk about what it means now to get a degree in our faith. Let no corrupting talk come out of your mouths, but only such as is good for building up, as fits the occasion, that it may give grace to those who hear. Let no corrupting talk come out of your mouths. Has anybody else ever failed at this? It's really easy sometimes to get negative. It's really easy sometimes to put yourself too high, to think you know more than you do, or to think that your opinion matters more than others. It's really easy sometimes to get corrupting talk as a habit. It's something we've got to watch out for. I think that as we advance, and as we learn, and as we grow, and as we graduate to the next level of our faith, we're going to understand that that means for us to go from critical to compassion. That, that golden rule. Think about that. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Are you being critical of somebody in your life right now? Are you being too judgmental? Are you being too harsh? Or are you being compassionate? What if the rules are reversed? What would you want? What would you like? Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. That golden rule, that's something that they use in school a lot still too. They might not use the scripture reference for it. But it's, it's throughout our world right now. Do unto others. And all the rules that you guys that have just graduated to high school or to out of high school or to college, all the rules that you've learned. I bet you've learned this one a number of times. So let's think about this in our Christian lives. Let's not be critical. Instead, let's be compassionate. Listen, this is hard. It's easy for me, I've told you. It's easy for me sometimes to, to get cynical about things. But compassion is what Jesus taught us. Compassion is what he wants us to have and is the example that he set for us. Kind of like the old verse, right? About the speck versus the plank. You got the speck in your eye, you got the plank in your eye. Sometimes it's hard for us to know, isn't it? Because of maybe how we're looking upon ourselves. See, everybody wants to think that they're the one with the speck. I'm the one with the speck, you're the one with the plank. Right? Isn't that how we think about it? I mean, maybe not realizing it. Do you have a speck or do you have a plank? Or is there that much of a difference? See, because some of the things that we've just talked about, the fruits of the Spirit that we know we kind of have in our lives every day, if you're not living a life that's full of these fruits of the Spirit, but yet you can point out when somebody else is messing up, God, think about it. Is it the speck or the plank? We've got to be able to go from critical to compassionate. And this is just one of those situations where, where it's really easy to say, what would Jesus do? Now, with that said, if you have a speck, you also want your Christian brother or sister to be able to say, Hey, you okay with this? Hey, are you all right? You know, do you, do you need help? Can I be there for you? Can I be a prayer partner for you? Can I be an encourager for you? Can I be an accountability partner for you? My mom loves to tell this story sometimes about my mom. Uh, we used to go to this pizza place and she'd get a, a, a spinach pizza. 
uh, La Rosa's up in Cincinnati. And she said one day she went to work after going to lunch and had a piece of spinach stuck in her teeth. And no one said a word about it. And she got home later that day and I said, hey, mom, you got some uh, spinach in your teeth right there. And her face turned red. She said, that's been there all day and no one said anything. And I was in meetings and I was talking to people and no one ever said anything about it. So she got home and of course I felt a little more comfortable. Now, I'm not telling you that you should tell everybody if they have something in their teeth. I'll leave that up to you because that could be odd. But when it comes to the sin in our lives, let's not be critical about it. Instead, let's be compassionate about it. And let's encourage each other. Get that sin out of here. To stay on that right path. To practice that golden rule. And to be compassionate. If there's a speck, please tell me. In a loving way. That's our responsibility. But now, what happens next? You get your diploma. You get your degree. We're going to be more service-minded. We're going to be more compassionate thinking. And now, let's go for our master's degree. Something that I have yet to even start and don't really want to, to be honest with you. Uh, but something that is very important for a lot of people to have nowadays. What about that master's degree? Isaiah chapter 55, verse 6 through 9. Love this verse. Listen to this. Seek the Lord while you can find him. Call on him now while he is near. Let the wicked change their ways and banish the very thought of doing wrong. Let them turn to the Lord that he may have mercy on them. Yes! Turn to our God. For he will forgive generously. My thoughts are nothing like your thoughts, says the Lord, and my ways are far beyond anything you can imagine. For just as the heavens are higher than the earth, so my ways are higher than your ways, and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. In our Christian lives, there's at some point where you probably went from a little bit of indifference to realizing the importance of what it means to be a follower of Jesus Christ. As you've grown up in this church, graduates, it's not just the fun and games of Bible school. We were talking about church camp today. We're all excited. Me and Ryan are going and having a week in uh, late June. Looking forward to it. And we're going to teach the kids that week for sure. It's like we do here on Wednesday nights and on, uh, on Sunday nights, and they're in the back doing right now with the kids. <coughs> we strive to do. We can be a habit. And it's, we need to have the fun times. We need to have the fellowship. Let me tell you, that's important. You guys know how I feel about that. Extremely important. But as we're doing that, we've got to make sure to teach these kids and each other about the importance of being a Christian, the example that that means urgency of it. Seek the Lord today, y'all. In all that you do. Seek Him now. If there's a problem, don't be the problem. Be a part of the solution. Understand, understand that we're talking about eternal ramifications for the example that you set to others. Christ has forgiven you. If you've accepted Him, He's forgiven you. He has. You've got to stay on that path. Now think about the power, the importance of those that you may run into in your lives. You've got to remember, guys, it's not about my way, but God's way. Not my will, but yours be done. And Jesus taught us to pray. Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Not my way, but God's way. And God's way is the only way. Keep the Lord in your plans. So we're going to think about that. And as we do that with our master's degree, we start to move forward. Maybe, just maybe, we can get our doctorate, our PhD. I know there's a few of you that have that, and I say, uh, you guys are awesome. I have a sneak suspicion I'll never get a PhD. Uh, however, what about our PhD of faith? Colossians chapter 2, verse 8. Don't let anyone capture you with empty philosophies and high-sounding nonsense that come from human thinking and from the spiritual powers of this world rather than from Christ. And if you look at Colossians 3, in there, and you can look that verse up on your own today. We've read it numerous times. Uh, about the, the things that we need to wear in our lives. 
brought together with love. But now, you high schoolers especially, I want you to pay attention right now. And those that are only a year or so away from graduating, pay attention. This is for you. Don't let anyone capture you with empty philosophies, high-sounding nonsense. As you go into college, you'll meet different people with different ways of thinking. There's a lot of places in the world, and most places that you go to that have a college in them are not like Ohio County. They're not like Hartford. Things, they're not like Beaver Dam. Things are be a little bit different. They might have different ideas. You might be in the minority with your faith. Be ready. Be ready to stand strong. Be ready to stay firm. Be ready to remember what you learned about the Lord. I encourage you to stay active with your faith, with your prayer life. If you're going away, get involved in the church. So many of our kids that, that, that leave home, uh, that they don't end up in a church wherever they're going to college at. we got to change that, folks. If that means more communication through our brotherhood, I'm working on that, I promise you. You guys need to be involved in a church. It won't be the same as Hartford Christian. It'll be a little different. They'll have different things. But find a place to worship God. Keep Him a part of your plan. And wherever you go, please, stay in touch. And if you need help finding a church, that's why I'm here. Let me help you with that. I'll make the phone calls. I'll find something that would just really be a place that you could be a part of and continue to grow as you keep the Lord in your plans. Because nothing works in life without God. So remember, Remember your faith. Just like we remember when you started this journey some years ago. Remember your faith. And just with a little PhD, your faith will surely grow. You're going to have to have patience. You might have some professors teaching you stuff that's not the way you think it is. They might have, you might have some professors or some teachers or some friends that tell you that Jesus isn't who you think He is. Be patient with them. But do not fall victim to that. Have some humility. Because as much as you think you know, I promise you there is so much more to learn. And that goes for each and every one of us. Don't think of yourself as better. But instead, think of yourself as someone who's going to work hard at their faith and growing and learning. And finally, you must have the determination. Don't ever give up. Don't ever lose faith. Don't ever lose hope. If you do these things, your faith will surely grow. Hard work for the Lord, it'll get you everywhere. I promise. Would you all please bow with me? Most gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you so very, very much for sending us your Son, our teacher, our Savior, our friend. We ask, Lord, that you would help us to follow him more and more every single day. I ask, Lord, for a blessing upon all those that are leaving one chapter and entering a new one in their lives. All these graduates, Lord, we ask, I ask that you will be with them, that you will help keep them strong, that you will help them to remember what they've learned about you and apply it daily in their lives. That we would all understand the importance of our journey as Christ followers, that you would help us to remember to be compassionate people, have a reason for joy every day. And that you will help us to never put ourselves first, but always, always, always serving you in your will. Lord, we thank you so very much for our church and our church family. Please continue to use us and to bless us. In Christ Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Folks, what about you? Do you have your degree? Do you have your diploma? Have you got your master's or your PhD in your faith? You know, there's a first step to that. You've got to give your life to Jesus. I'm going to give you an opportunity right now to come down the aisle and let's talk about you giving your life to Him and starting that journey. Would you please stand as we sing?